And then the very last thing that happened, the nail in the coffin that solidified for me that I'm done, like I'm done, is the story I'm about to tell you now. I saved the best for last. Hello and good morning, Scullies. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Savon Pearson, for those who are new here. And the reason why I'm laughing is because it's been a long time since I've actually sat down and talked about my actual life. And so to come back and talk about my life in such a <laughs> sad manner just cracks me up. And you'll understand why as I get more into this story. But hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna be giving you guys an update on my what I learned in my 2.5 seconds of dating as a lesbian. I posted that video September 9th, 2020, and it is currently March 10th of 2022. So it's almost been two years since that video. And let me tell y'all, I am still over dating, but now the situations are different. So I thought I'd give you guys a nice little lighthearted, maybe not lighthearted for me, but lighthearted for you video, just talking about my dating experiences now since I've essentially moved out to Atlanta from Indiana. This is my escapades of dating in Atlanta and it is, let me tell you, just as sad, but you're gonna get a kick out of it. So, and I think I need to unload this. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get straight into my very sad dating life and why I'm done dating and I'm just gonna love myself, okay? Or at least I think that's why I'm doing that. <laughs> I also do want to preface that I am on a new medication and this medication has me like wired as shit. I promise you like wired as shit. So just wanna let you know if I'm speaking a little bit too fast, I'm, I apologize, but I am getting acclimated to it. But it also has made me motivated because you see I'm uploading again. So hello, welcome back. I just needed a little bit of a push. I moved here in November of 2020. And as soon as I got out here, you guys know, I got straight into that relationship with that girl, which I have that whole five part series on my, my shortest and most toxic relationship, which is crazy. Go watch that if you haven't already. With this video, you don't have to be caught up on all my videos, but it is recommended that you do, but you still gonna, you know, be entertained when I tell you the stories, but really give you the context of where we've been so I can show you where we are, if that makes sense. And I actually don't talk about every single experience I've had, but I will be talking about the ones that have really impacted me and what I've learned from each and every single one of them. So without further ado, let's get into my very sad dating life in Atlanta, Georgia. So let me give you a quick little rundown in my recent videos of my brief experience out here in Atlanta before all the things I'm talking about right now. So first, we have my shortest and most toxic relationship. Then second, we have the unicorn situation that was absolutely terrible and I'm gonna update you on because she reached out to me. And third, we have the one where I was talking about me being demisexual in friendships, and that was because I was trying to navigate whether or not I liked a person that I was friends with, which now I realize I probably didn't. I was just getting it mixed up. But now we're no longer friends, and I miss her very dearly. <laughs> But I kept the video up because it helps some of you all. So that is my brief inch, very short history up until now. So let's get straight into now. So after the unicorn situation happened, I just vowed to myself that I would no longer get on dating apps as I talked about in my previous video. Because unfortunately you all, and this is so embarrassing to admit, as soon as I got on Tinder and um, Hinge and all those apps out here, I wasn't really getting matches. So when I did and they were quote unquote conventionally attractive or quote unquote my type, they turned out to be a little, little insane in the membrane. So it made sense as to why. <laughs> so after I vowed to not get on dating apps, I discovered the illustrious, the beautiful thing that is called lesbian bars. Yes, because there's actually only 12 or 13 in the United States now but the one that I know of the one that we all know and love is my sister's room and when I tell you I became a weekend regular at my sister's room because again I swore off dating apps yes I said because of all the crazy folks that I was meeting but also because I wasn't really getting any matches so I figured they have to see me in person because I guess my pictures aren't doing it <laughs> I guess they're not doing it and they can't see my personality 
over the the screen of a phone, you know? So I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's not this, you know, maybe I need to go meet some people in person. And so that's exactly what I did. And so I became a series regular at the show that is my sister's room, the lesbian bar in Atlanta, yes. It was to the point where when I would walk in, they'd be like, oh, hey, hey, Savon. I'm like, <laughs> it was just so nice because it was the first time that I was in a room full of women that liked women. Like that was something that I hadn't experienced before because again, I came out a couple years or actually may, I, may came, I may have came out three years ago, but I was in a relationship and then the pandemic hit. So I wasn't able to actually like explore in a, in a queer space. And honestly, it's not like I went in there with hopes. I, I never had hopes of anything happening or expectations. I just wanted to have a good time. I would go with my friends and you know, at that point I would just be scoping out, see, who, see who's there and and you really I feel like a bar it's a very convoluted way of seeing how people are judged on attractiveness it's just like you can if you sit in a bar and just watch it it's like it's almost like a zoo you see you're just seeing the animals mate with each other or figure out which person they want to dance with which person they, they decide to choose and so at that point I would be going there regularly and I would see this but I would never be the person that was chosen I noticed my friend would get the looks um but I wouldn't and I'd think okay well then maybe it's how I'm dressed you know so I would go dress more girly and and still it's like uh me you know you see my personality I'm more of a life of the party like I'm just, like I'm, I'm just there to have to have fun I was never the person that was taken seriously um in that way it was just more so like I was like the fun friend but not the person that you want to like go home with if that makes sense and oh that's really sad to say out loud it hurts to say that out loud but we're being brutally honest here um because it's just something that I have to you have to be honest with yourself in order for you to move forward because if you keep lying to yourself I'm oh, girl and so it was at that moment that I kept assessing like what was it about me and I'm not saying that I wasn't getting any looks at all but I was more so, I would say I would get looks from like the older lesbians, like the older mom age ones would come and dance with me. But the people my age, they wouldn't really look me, like look at me twice. Or if they would, um, I'm talking my type, you know, so I, I, I typically like a, a good mix of a masculine and feminine. So like the feminine energies that I would feel, it would more so just be like, hey girl, cause that's how I am. Um, I'm the same way, I'm just like, hey girl, what's up? But the masculine energies that I was really attracted to, they just, they wouldn't give me the time of day, you know? And so after weeks of going, I was starting to get a little burnt out, but at the same time, I was thinking, you know, this is the, this is this place that I feel exhilarated in and I feel empowered in because everyone around me is like me. And so I go one more time and it is there that I meet a person, which I should probably name them. I'm gonna name them Carter. Oh my goodness, Carter. That name has just been on my brain. So I meet this person, Carter, and it was just instant. It was like an instant connection. Um, so I was sitting outside with my friends and they were across the, they were across the bar and we were actually outside. So they were across the bar patio and I could see them and they're looking at me and I'm looking at them and I'm like, hmm, and I have on this dress. Um, I look really girly that day. I felt good. They look like my normal type and they smile and I'm like, okay, you know, maybe this is what I think it is. But also in my head, I'm thinking maybe I'm delusional because I've never gotten this attention here before, you know? Oh, hey girl. <laughs> So, so cute. Yeah, it's cute. So we're eyeing each other from across the patio. Suddenly my friends and I were thinking, okay, let's get back to the dance floor. And so we're getting ready to pass them. And I look at them and I'm like, hmm. I say a little thing and they literally pull me in close. That dominance, that masculinity dominance. Oh! And so we get out to the dance floor and we're dancing and it is absolutely amazing. I had never felt so um, wanted <laughs> ever, like when I tell you, ever in my uh, 23 years, I never felt so seen and wanted by someone who I actually also felt that way towards. And I never had an experience where it felt so absolutely mutual, um, purely, you know, besides my, my shortest, most toxic relationship, which was just all 
a scheme. And so I remember at that point there was strippers and strippers came on stage. This is important. Strippers came on stage and, and there was, you know, the typical looking stripper with big, big butt, big boobs. You know, she right there. She looking good. But then there was a girl that had a smaller frame that looked more like me. And I whispered in their ear, I was like, oh my God, like, you know, it's so nice to see my body represented up there. And they just said, your body's the exact body type that I love. And it was like one of the first times where I've actually ever heard that, you know, I, that, that was solid. I would say that is definitely one of my favorite nights I've had out here in Atlanta, but Yes. It just felt so nice to be validated for who I was and not having to feel like I needed to change anything, if that makes sense. Like having not to feel like I needed to, to be thicker or I needed to look a different way. It was just a way where I finally felt received the way I wanted to be received. And I'm like super thankful for that. I learned really that I could be beautiful while also being skinny because I know that may sound absurd to some folks, but really it's not currently, it hasn't, or actually ever in my life has it been a good thing. Um, I've always been made fun of it for me, for being skinny. And it's always just been not the beauty standard. You know, the beauty standard has always been like free to be curvy. And even at the point where the beauty standard was skinny, I still had a little bit more meat on my bones than the skinniest girl if that makes sense. So it never was okay for me to actually be in my body type. So with that, I learned that my body can be accepted and loved by someone else. Doesn't mean that I need that love from someone else to accept my own body, but it felt good to have that validation. But then I got ghosted. <laughs> <laughs> laughing to keep from crying because I got completely ghosted. And that was also around the time that I made the demisexual video with my friend. So it happened literally during that time frame. And so I was still kind of stuck on her, if that makes sense. So I went from that to back to her. After we stopped being friends, I was kind of kaput done for a minute. And things really didn't pick up again for me until January and all of this happened around the summer to fall. I was completely like nothing, like I had absolutely nothing for uh, months. And this is so unlike me, but when I tell you that the last few times and last few relationships really messed me up, I have really been scarred. So I stopped looking um, and I just kind of just been living, living my life up until January. So in January, I had just got back to Atlanta from home. I was super, super excited about getting back to my YouTube channel, super motivated to just get more shit done. I just ended up not really doing as much with my own stuff, but branching out and helping out other folks um, with their projects, which was really beneficial for me. And so that's really where I have been. And that is on the set of that is where this next situation occurred. So showing up on set the first time, I could tell that there was a bit of an apprehension to how they were supposed to address me. I could tell that everyone was just trying to figure out, is this girl feminine? Is this girl masculine? Do we call her bro? Do we call her girl? What is it? And I guess that's that's been my main issue and that's gonna be a whole separate video. But I wanted to mention that because it is important to where I'm going. It wasn't until I opened up my mouth, which is usually what happens, that they realize like, oh, she's a girl. <laughs> you know, She's not masculine. Because I dress so androgynous, I would say. Um, but really, it's just being perceived as androgynous. I just really put on pants and a shirt and some boots or some pants or, or, or some shoes and I just keep it moving. I haven't really had the the time or the money to, to really care about how I looked outwardly. Now I do. It's just been taking, taking me a while to get to that. I think I'm really rounding a corner where I really want to figure out what my look is. But in that time frame, it wasn't happening. And so for me opening up my mouth, that's when they were to figure out that I am quote unquote feminine. Um, that's how I can be perceived. I could tell it was more of a little, I would say sister vibes. It's just like, oh yeah, you're cool. You know how to do stuff with the camera, but I'm not really checking for you. 
if that makes sense. And I'm not saying that a per people have to check for me, but you also can read a room. And so on set, there was a girl there that met my criteria of what I usually find attractive, but I wasn't going to do anything about it. And this is the theme of everything I'm going to talk about today. I was never going to do things about these situations, but I ended up doing things anyways, because that's how it just happened. And so on set, she was also a camera person and we just kind of, she wasn't really familiar with how to use the particular camera and I was very familiar. I was always helping her out and always like over her shoulders, changing the settings or telling her like, hold the camera this way, or you know, you wanna get this pan. But in that way, we also started just talking in general about life. And it was really just about nutrition. And then we also got on relationships and why we're single and all that. And then it also turned into a group conversation. But but the thing is that everyone on that set, except for one person, was in a relationship. And so that was the issue <laughs> is um, that's what I noticed in lesbian spaces. There's always like this pressure for you to for some people to be coupled up. And so they saw that we were talking and they immediately were thinking, oh, look, them two together. But here's the thing. If you watch my beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I'm becoming my own beholder video. That is a huge thing. I like when people get, when people were, historically when people were paired with me in that way, it was not a good thing. And so when that happened, I got super nervous um, because one girl on set was super, she was an instigator, you know, she was, she wanted, she was a matchmaker she called herself in and she wanted to put us together. But I didn't know if this person was uncomfortable with having to be paired with me because that is something I've always experienced in the past. And so in that time frame, you know, we established that we're single and all those things and we continue shooting and it's pretty ambiguous. And then it gets to the point where I'm getting ready to leave and they are big on gender roles, which is something I also noticed in the older like the 30s and up lesbian community they're really huge on um the mass does this the femme does this they were saying that they wanted someone to walk me out because it, it was dark and they didn't want me to be out there by myself and so of course they all got her to walk me out and we walked out and we started chatting um and clearly you know it's not like there was like a huge vibe there or anything but it was clear from how everything was being said that there was a push for this we ended up exchanging numbers at some point on set before um, but she ends up saying goodbye and we give each other a hug and I say, you know, hit me up. Well, she never did. <laughs> and it was another one of those moments where I was like, fuck, I fell into it when I knew in my gut that this wasn't a thing. It was just people pushing it on. And then it was just nice to be paired with someone who was usually my type, even though I knew what it was in the beginning. <sighs> In that situation, I really learned to follow my gut. Don't listen to everyone around you who's pushing for something. Listen to yourself and, and really be honest with yourself on how situations are going. And that's really what I learned overall in that situation. But, you know, it's not like I really expected anything going into it, but it just sucked that I never, you know, now that it was pushed in that direction, it sucks that I, I never got a follow up. But then on set, I would hear her talking about girls that she's attracted to, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it just kind of played into that notion of here I am, you know, the little sister, the fun person, but you don't really check for. I'm tired of being perceived that way because that's not who I am, but that I'm tired of being perceived that way. So after that situation, we were on set together again, um, but this time it wasn't about her. We went right back to the unicorn girl because I got a text from her randomly out of the blue after we hadn't seen each other in almost a year. She said, hey boo, you know, I miss you or something like that. When I first see the text message, I laugh out loud. I literally laugh out loud because I'm like, you are absolutely hilarious if you think I'm ever in my life going to talk to you again. Why would you ever, ever talk to me after that situation? But then I was on set with the folks who were all in relationships and I kind of gave in. Because I was surrounded by folks who were in relationships and felt rejected by the folks that were single. It was just a moment of weakness. And she said, you know, I wanna see you, I wanna hang out, you know, let's cuddle. And it was just something different about this time. Whereas before she just kind of popped in and out, this time she was more so setting boundaries and asking like, is this okay with you? Do you mind this? Do you like this? And it was nice to have her do that because this is not the person that I had talked to a year previous. And so it was just nice to have her respect my boundaries this time. And so I thought things were different. 
I didn't want to just say how high if she asked me to jump. So I said, you know, can't do tonight, but maybe you can come over another time. And so later that week, I asked her if she could come over. And she said, absolutely, I can. And when I tell you I got so ready, I bought wine, cleaned my whole house. You already know the shave, everything. And I was so ready and just for her to <laughs> butt up to the fame of the video, <laughs> ghost me. And in that situation, you know, I, I, I learned to like not let people back in. You know, once they show you who they are, once they let you know exactly who they are, don't let them back in. Because you're saying it's okay for you to walk all over me, you know? I don't care about my own boundaries, so why should you? And so I learned, you know, if something like that were to happen again, if another person were to pop back into my life that I didn't have a positive experience with in the first place, there's no reason for me to bring them back in. And though I was, I had a moment of weakness, I felt lonely. I know now that I need to be stronger in those situations. So after that situation, again, I went on another brief break. But then I decided, you know, what it was, what, what would it be like if I were to get back out there? At that time, it truly been a year since I had been near another individual in that way besides that night that happened at the bar. And so I just thought, you know, what if I just put myself out there slightly? You know, this is more recently. I was thinking... I don't want to be in a relationship. I, I am now under the guise where I'm like, I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't think I need that right now. Because I came out a little bit later than when I feel people normally come out. I didn't come out in my 40s, but I did come out in my early 20s, which means I kind of missed that high school time where you could really experiment with women. And again, the relationships that I've been in, as you've seen, have been pretty traumatic. So I haven't had that experience as well. And so I was in this notion of, you know, maybe let me get myself out there and, and get some experience finally with dating and seeing what that's like besides, you know, being just jumping straight into a relationship with someone. And so I saw that there was a speed dating event. And so I said, you know what? I talked to my therapist about it. I talked to my mom about it. And these are things that I don't normally do. And I said, you know what, girl, we're about to go. We're going to the speed dating event. So I got myself all nice looking and I, and I went. Now, let me tell you what I learned from speed dating. I don't ever want to do speed dating again. <laughs> It was terrifying to have to see, talk to, a, talk to a person and then two minutes later you talk to another person and then you're trying to figure out what to say. And if you don't have a vibe with someone, it's just super awkward. You're just sitting there. And I remember one of my first dates, we, we said, how are you? Who are you? What do you do? And then I was like, I don't know what to say. But I literally just said that and I felt so bad, but I didn't feel like we had a vibe. And so I just, it was, it was nice practice, but overall I learned that that's not something that I really want to do. Um, and I learned that, it, that I'm not ready right now for a relationship. It really solidified that I wasn't ready for a relationship and I'm still not. But out of that, I was able to meet a person there. We connected because we were the only ones that had a mask on and we became friends from that. Or friends is what I thought it was, but here's the thing, I met her at a speed dating event, but I wasn't thinking because I met her at a speed dating event that we would be dating afterwards. But that was my bad because the same thing that girls did to me, I did to her. I said, hey girl, and that was it, you know, we're like, I thought we were just friends, but no, you know, she, I asked her what she was doing for Valentine's Day. And I didn't know that you don't ask a girl what she's doing for Valentine's Day unless you want to take her on a date. But I was thinking we would go for friends Valentine's Day, but that's not what was perceived. And I understand if someone's asking you to go out for Valentine's Day at a speed dating event, you would think the same thing. But that is where I ended up. And, you know, I ended up taking her out on a date, which was the first time I'd ever taken a woman out on a date. Very interesting, uh, besides being in relationships again. So it was there that I realized again, it solidified again for me that I, I don't really want to be with anyone right now. I just feel this pull to stick with myself and see what I have to offer. Because um, I feel like, 
even then in the past video I was talking about how I wanted to get to know myself better and love myself I still haven't maybe I have grown because situations have forced me to but I still haven't sat down and really gotten to know myself and until then I don't think I'll be ready for another relationship and so I communicated that to her and now we're good friends you know I really I, I really truly love this girl she's also a cancer we're like if you guys didn't know I'm a cancer she's also because you guys keep guessing that I'm something else but I'm a cancer but you know she's just a really good friend now and it's just been nice to, to have that person there and so from speed dating and from that date I learned which is really messed up but I, I learned that I'm not ready I'm, I'm not ready and then the very last thing that happened that 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 was like the nail in the coffin the nail in the coffin that solidified for me that I'm done like I'm done for a little bit like I a little bit again maybe another year like I'm done is the story I'm about to tell you now. I saved the best for last. So currently I am working on a project that I am super passionate about, super passionate about. And it is inspired by Root and Jewels on Euphoria. Um, it is coming very soon and I actually will be shooting it this Saturday. I'm super excited about it and I will also be shooting the behind the scenes because I'm gonna be making a full YouTube video on the behind the scenes of how we shot the video. So super excited to share that with you all. But with that, I needed people to cast in this video. And so I was thinking, okay, because of course you know me, I'm always gonna want to, to show queer black women on screen. That's just, that's just me. And so I'm thinking, what queer black women do I really know? You know, that didn't ghost me. And so I reached out to this person that I became friends with um, because she was a friend of a friend. Um, so let me tell you the background. Real quick context. This person I met at an album release party of my other friend. My friend introduced me to her as a videographer and she does dance and she was looking for people to shoot her dancing. And I was looking for more people to shoot in general because I had just moved out to the city. And so we instantly connected and there was just this sensuality about her that I couldn't explain. I just could not put my exact finger on it, but it was just like a, a vibe there that you know when you feel an energy between two people. But then her girlfriend walked up and you know, I met her girlfriend and I was and immediately in my brain, it went boop, because you know the last time somebody had a girlfriend, I sat down and made a five part video about her. So <laughs> no, that's why she's only a portion of this video. <laughs> and from there we followed each other on Instagram and we said that we would work together. Um, and then the whole group, you know, we all started hanging out together. Um, and so I started seeing a little bit more of her and her girlfriend. And every time I would see her, if we were alone, I would just feel this sensual vibe that I couldn't quite put my finger on. But I didn't want to do anything about it because again, she had a girlfriend. So that's just, it ain't gonna happen. And so one day her, her girlfriend and I all hung out and you know, we came to my place. We're literally sitting on this couch um, and we're all chatting and they're sitting next to each other. But it, it was just like one of those situations where you could feel and you could sense that the energy was there, but the girlfriend was like, intercepting that energy and and it's weird to just to talk about energy in this way but that's the only way I can really explain it to you and it wasn't like I had intentions of doing anything with her it was more so like she was blocking any energy at all you know even friendship energy we had a lot of things in common and it was just like no no <laughs> and I understand because that's how I would be if I saw that my girlfriend had a very intimate already like you could literally sense the energy between your girlfriend and someone else of course I would feel some type of way and I'd want to be there and so we went to an art show and and that was nice and as we were leaving I was in the middle of them too and then I noticed her girlfriend moved herself so she could be in the middle of us and it was just one of those situations where you're like all right I'm not gonna see y'all again <laughs> I'm so sorry but this is so uncomfortable well that was until she started hitting me up because she wanted to work with me on different projects so I'm gonna call her Carter too so Carter 2 wants to work with me on more projects. And so a couple times Carter 2 has come over and both times Carter 2, there has been a vibe. And, and, and both times Carter 2 has, has done a few things that were kind of crossing the line-ish. It's the way she hugs, the way she wants to be close. She says she cuddles with her friends, you know, things like that, where it would raise red flags for you. But for me, I was thinking, it's been six months since I've touched someone. 
So if she's saying all of this and, and also I had heard that their relationship was open. So I was thinking I'm going to follow her lead because her relationship is clearly open. And I'm thinking there's no way she would be doing any of this if her relationship wasn't open. But it wasn't like we did anything beyond an intimate hug or a graze or, you know, a stare into each other's eyes. It wasn't really anything beyond that. It was just a vibe that was there. Her girlfriend after that moved to New York. And then we hung out again and I noticed that it was just, it was like she was now the one blocking the energy. Carter too is now blocking the energy. And it felt weird. And I just felt like I needed to get out of there. And so that's really what I did. We went to a concert and the energy was off. And so I ended up leaving. Well, fast forward to present day. I told her about the project that I was doing and I told her that I needed someone to play the main character because I wasn't sure if the other person who is actually the first person I was referring to, she's playing my main character. She wasn't responding at that point. So I asked um, Carter too, if she would be the one to do it. Carter too was saying that she was definitely interested Interested, so I sent her my creative brief, which I stayed up all night doing. It's literally 20 pages. So in love with it. I'm so excited to share this project with you guys. But I shared with her my creative brief and I told her, hey, this is a character I want you to play. Just let me know if you want to be able to do it. We can hop on a call and I can explain it a bit more um, in detail to you. And she said, yeah, you know, I'll call you when I have a free five, 10 minutes and we can do that. And so she calls me a little bit later that night. Um, this is after I get off work and she's like, hey, you know, I'm telling you, I don't know if I want to do the project just yet, just because it's a really triggering situation for me because the project is about domestic violence and domestic abuse in um, lesbian relationships. And this is something that I've experienced. And unfortunately, it's something that she had also experienced. And so I told her, you know, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't mean it trigger you you know if you don't want to to do it it's okay I can have someone else act in it but you know ultimately you don't have to like tell me or talk about it but she's like you know like I feel comfortable or I feel really comfortable talking to you if I could just I I would tell you about it you know if we had time right now and I'm like you know I have time if you want to talk I can talk on the phone for a little bit I'd been writing all day and she said no, I don't want to talk to you on the phone. I have to tell tell you this in person. I have to talk to you in person. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting, but sure, you know, you can come over a little bit later if you want. And she said, you know, yeah, actually I will. You know, I have a dance class, but I'll come over a little hour before and we can hang out. We can talk about the whole situation. And so I'm not going to get into the details of what we talked about, but I will get into the little parts that happened <laughs> that I feel like she had me fucked up and now I feel stupid. But she came over and as soon as she came over in the parking garage, she gives me this hug and this hug is super close I'm telling you like engulfed in each other and we sit there for a good three minutes and I'm just like wow you know this is nice this is nice it's nice to hug someone but also wow she must have needed that and that's what she said she said you know I really needed this hug and I said you know it was nice you know I needed that too I did and so we come in the house and we come sit on the couch back there I play music I ask her if she wants some wine you know we start talking as we are talking you know I notice you know she's she I asked her if she needs another hug I gave her a hug because she seems like she's a little tense talking about the situation and then it's like from there that things start to get a little bit more like close and close, if that makes sense. Like it went from a hug to a hold to a cuddle. And at that point, I'm thinking, OK, you know, she did say last time she cuddles with her friends. <sighs> and now I'm saying all this out loud, I feel stupid, but. She said last time that she cuddled with her friends. So, you know, this is nice. I need this, but I'm not thinking I'm going to fall in love with this person. But it's, it, it is nice to, to, to cuddle with someone. And so I tell her, you know, hey, I have a projector. If you want to come see the projector in my room. And I definitely understand now what that means or how that seems. But the couch was uncomfortable. If you want to be real, I wanted to be in the bed and cuddle. <laughs> not the couch. And so she comes in. But she had a little bit of a, a hesitance, I noticed. And that is a hesitance that I should have said something on, but I didn't. And this is now where I am. And so we get in there and, and we lay down and this is when she actually starts getting to her story. And she got there around 7.30 and she left around 3 a.m. And so from 7.30, you know, she's just been talking and telling me about all of her relationship history, starting from her regular, her relationships beforehand and then her relationship, going to a relationship that was abusive. So I get the whole story and I'm just sitting there listening, but also we're, we're cuddling, I'm comforting her. Um, and it's just nice to be close to someone. But at the same time, when I tell you, I was exhausted to listen to someone talk for that long. Exhausted. 
Uh, but it was nice to just have someone to be close to. And it was at that moment that I was like, okay, I'm hungry. And so I was working on setting boundaries. And so I tell her, hey, you know, I'm hungry. So you can either like leave or you can come with me to go get some food. But either way, I'm going to go get some food. And, you know, she said, you know, we can go, you know. So she takes me to go get some food. I get us some donuts. And she asked me in the car if she could hold my hand. And she grabs my hand and she just, and she's like, you know, thank you for being such a good friend and, and listening to me and talking to me today. And I'm like, yeah, you know, of course. And I'm thinking she's gonna let go, but no, the whole rest of the ride, she just holds on to my hand. So we get back to my place and we're back in the living room. And this time, you know, cause she's also into camera stuff, I'm showing her my camera gear. And at one point I needed help putting something together. And so I asked her for help. And so we're sitting down on the ground, crisscross applesauce, and we're working on it. But then I get frustrated. And I tell her, you know, I don't want to work on this anymore. So I push it to the side. And that is when I initiate and I get on top of her and I straddle her and I give her a hug. And so we're hugging that way. And then she looks at me in my eye and says, why is your heart beating so fast? And I say, you know, you know why? Like, why are you asking? You know why I'm close to you? She's like, no, I don't know why. Just tell me. And I say, because I'm attracted to you. And she's like, yeah, I know. I just wanted to hear you say it. And so then I asked her, are you attracted to me? And she said, somewhat. And that should have been my little notion to like cut this off, but I didn't. I didn't, the night continued, the night progressed. Because again, this was probably around 12, 1 a.m. and we still had until three. And so we get back to my room and this time she's like, you know, I told you all my stuff, but you didn't tell me any of yours, you know? Well, tell me about your stuff. And so essentially I tell her what I'm about to tell you now, um, which is I don't think that I truly got over the, f the relationship that happened um, with my first love. Like, I, I don't think I truly got over it. I think I just got into other relationships, but I feel like a sense, a part of me has never gotten over the fact that it felt like I was completely deceived the whole time. And I have this like fear that other people are going to do that. And then I also have this thing where I compare everyone to that person, which is why my type looks a lot like her. So I was explaining that to her and I, I told her I had wrote a whole script about our relationship. I read her the script. Um, and then I also showed her the breakup text that ultimately ended our relationship and and she read it and she was saying like I understand what she's saying and her situation she said with her girlfriend it was the opposite her ex-girlfriend at this point because she tells me that her and her girlfriend broke up and so now I'm thinking okay she's single and so she told me that her and her ex-girlfriend it was very similar except her ex-girlfriend was me and she was my ex-girlfriend and so she was telling me explaining me the situation and such from her perspective um, and I'm crying because it hurts and it still hurts, you know, because I have to find a way. And I think it was that night. And this is really what I learned is I learned that I need to find a way to heal from that situation because I'm never going to get closure on that. And that person that I knew doesn't exist anymore. And it's not like I want the relationship back. I just miss the person and the idea of everything. But it's time for me to, to move on and find a new basis and find out for myself what, what love really looks like. That isn't that. But I was explaining all this to her and I'm crying and she's holding me and we, we continue to talk. At some point she puts me on top of her and she squeezes me because she likes to squeeze. And we, we start talking about how all this time there was always this unspoken thing between us, but we never talked about it. And she wasn't going to say anything because she was just, we we're just friends and she didn't want to ruin anything. But also her girlfriend noticed and her girlfriend was uncomfortable with it. So she wasn't going to say anything and she was glad that I did. And so we were talking about that and I was telling her how relieved it was to like be able to say that out loud. We're talking about butts for some reason. And, you know, she puts her hand on my butt and she squeezes it and, and it's just like, I know this is like very vulgar, but it's, it's also in a sense of, I'm telling you all of this because the next day I get a call from her and she says that she apologizes for everything that happened. She only views me as a friend and she felt that I needed that last night. And so that's why she did it. She wasn't following her own boundaries. She was just going by mine. 
And that's why she did everything because I needed it and that she's not attracted to me. She doesn't look at me that way. And she's telling me this because she cares about me. And it was, it was heartbreaking to hear because it was the same thing that I heard before. You know, I had no expectations. I didn't want her, I wasn't thinking come over when I asked her to be, to do a role in my film. But instead that is what happened. And so in this very last situation, I think that was the last straw for me. And it made me want to revisit this video, you know, and really make a promise to myself that this time, this time I'm actually going to spend this time by myself. <laughs> Find out, you know, what makes me, me. And if someone wants to figure out how great I am, they can, but until then, it'll just be me. And so that was really my big basis on making this video. I hope that you guys got a good kick out of everything that I said. If not, then I'm gonna be really angry because I just bared my soul. I was super vulnerable and I'm not vulnerable with anyone. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I will either see you guys in the next video that is about uh, my gender expression or the new uh, Euphoria style themed video that I'm gonna be doing where I'm doing my shoot behind the scenes. So either way, I cannot wait to continue to make content for you all. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.